in a second here and you'll see this little dilly bobber in the corner and then when it turns red like that it means that i'm recording and this is super useful if anybody misses your meetings okay and i wanted to double check is cat meow here uh cat tracy yes cat meow uh just a second um she needs the link Give me a second, because she is co-teaching this with us. I'm going to send it to her right now. Okay. Okay, let's see here. So I'm going to get started here. And Kat, when Cat Meow, hopefully, she, when she uh, joins, uh, she'll pipe up. Okay. And just so you guys know, if I'm glancing to the side, I have a multiple monitor setup, which is possible. You can just have multiple displays with um, both Zoom and um, Google Hangouts Meet. And I'm just kind of going through our, um, our curriculum and making sure we're hitting all the bullet points. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. We're going to get started. And um, basically, the purpose of this is for people um, that want to use teleconferencing for obvious reasons now. It's really important to be able to do. Um, but even moving forward with your organization, this is um, tele teleconferencing is incredibly useful. So um, I've, I've done this. One of my favorite things about it is that you can present, you know, you can be like, look nice from the top, from the belly button up. And um, and then you can be in your pajamas <laughs> while working from home. So, um, Cat Meow's here. Cat Meow, did you want to say hello? Sure. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for being patient. Um, <laughs> couldn't find the link for some reason. <laughs> yeah, this is this is all good troubleshooting stuff. So, and and again, you know, please bear with us if. Um, if things aren't running perfectly for you, this is part of this. I realize that it's a little bit bass backwards to learn about teleconferencing by having to go to a teleconferencing situation. So, um, but this is at the moment the only way we can do this. So, okay. So um, the point of this is to sort of like help you guys decide what software do you want to use for um, for your organization. Um, and do you, does it make sense for you? Do you need something like Google Hangouts Meet? Do you want to use something like just regular Google Hangouts, which is sort of a uh, Google Hangouts Meet is a more advanced version of um, Google Hangouts? Um, or do you want to do something like Zoom, which is really robust teleconferencing software? Um, so I'll start. Um, I'll start by saying the 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 differences between Google Hangouts Meet and Zoom, um, at least for part of why I'm using Google Hangouts Meet, is because we have an enterprise level G Suite account that allows us to use Google Hangouts Meet. And for us, it, at the moment, it makes more sense to use this as our teleconferencing software because it's basically folded into what we already have. It's part of the whole um, Google inter UI, so it's deeply integrated with Google Calendar. We can attach Google Docs. I'll, you know, if you have a an attachment or something, you can actually like attach it to a calendar um, invite, and it will show up in the meeting. Um, so it's it's deeply integrated into the Google Verse, and I think the the user interface is pretty stripped down and accessible. Although some may disagree, and that's fine. <laughs> Um, it's not it's not as robust as Zoom, but if it's already something that you have, um, then and you don't want to pay for Zoom, that's the thing about Zoom is you have to pay for accounts. So um, before I bash on Zoom too much, because it's actually really good software, I don't want to bash on it. I'm going to have Kat now. Do you want to talk a little bit about why you would use Zoom? 
Sure. Um, one of the main reasons we uh, have been using Zoom at the organization I work at is because we have some board meetings that are set up so that our community can come and participate. And they have um, the ability that where you can moderate a lot of microphones at one time. It also has the ability to take and record not just the audio, the chats, as well as the video. And you can get that all downloaded as separate files and choose which ones you'd like to integrate, like say onto your website for public, um, for um, grant requirements or, or things such as those. Um, why else would I use Zoom? Um, if you buy the account with Zoom, there's a pretty cool background you can add to your yeah. Yes. Uh, image uh, to your to your um, video feed and that can be really fun um, I also really appreciate the ability to have a waiting room set up that way if you are having like a formal meeting with folks and there's a certain amount of leadership that needs to kind of meet first um, discuss you know what's going to happen during the meeting real quick before you uh, allow the public in then you can have that meeting and then um, allow the public in one by one or if say somebody's getting a little rowdy or what's been happening frequently since we've been doing a lot more remote work we've been seeing the increase of zoo zoom bombing zoom bombing uh, zoom bomb <laughs> and that way you can remove folks if if they are becoming an issue not allowing you to get your work done or disrupting the discussion with like hate work, hate speech or something like that. Um, so it gives you that ability to remove folks and put them to wait in the waiting room. It also allows uh, you to allow people to join and talk amongst themselves before you start your meeting. So those are some of the cool things. I'm yeah. sure I missed a couple. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I would say about the part of the reason why we emailed you the link to this meeting um, rather than putting on a public page is because fear of um, people trying to crash our party. Um, so uh, for future events, we are including the link, but um, that is kind of good practice is to think about if you don't want to get bombed, you can create an, uh, a code to enter the meeting or you can... Um, you can not publicly post the link. And so what we did was we just emailed you, we did a calendar invite to this. Um, so um, we, will, um, we will go down through, I just saw a question about our virtual backgrounds only on licensed app. I believe so, um, but we'll go down through kind of a, a laundry list of things and um, hopefully it covers your questions at the end. And then what we'll do is, um, when, when we're sort of done with the Google meeting portion of things, then we can ask questions. We can unmute our mic and just go ahead and ask those questions. So um, I'm gonna start. Uh, the, another thing that we need to think about are, regardless of, of Zoom, if you're using Zoom, Google Hangouts, or um, Google Hangouts Meet, is whether or not your, how does your wireless work? Um, if you don't, there's, if you have too slow of a, of a wireless connection, it might make sense to mute your video um, because that eats up a lot of bandwidth. Um, audio is, it just eats up less bandwidth, pushes through less data. Um, and then obviously you can call into things too. Both have a calling option. But um, Juan, do, um, any comments about uh, wireless issues and connectivity? Yeah, so we use uh, Zoom conferencing software for a lot of our sort of meeting, training, webinar needs. Uh, and our uh, internet connection at our office space is particularly sketchy. So we lease office space from another organization, so we don't have much control over that. And so I think that's actually part of the reason why we uh, sort of zone in on Zoom, I guess. Um, we use both. So we use both Hangouts and uh, Zoom, but we tend to use Hangouts when we're having like internal chat meetings. Like right now we have daily check-ins. We use Google Hangouts for that. But whenever we have like meetings with uh, external partners, like we work with uh, programs and state agencies across the state, we tend to use Zoom uh, because we just find that because of our sketchy internet connection that Zoom is a, less, uh, a little less buggy than, than, than Google Meetings or Google Hangouts, um, particularly when you have a lot of participants, at least we have found it in our experience. Um, so yeah, that's a big consideration I'd say for us whenever we sort of decide on what it is that, or what software that we want to use. Okay. Um, and who who are you with? Just to let us know. 
Yeah, so I work with uh, Oregon Ask, so Oregon After School for Kids. Um, so for context, uh, so we are the statewide after school network. Uh, the way that I tell people that the best way to think about us is that we exist to, per, to support after school and summer programs. Um, so we don't provide any direct programming ourselves, but we work with the programs that do. So we provide curriculum support, we provide professional development training, uh, and then we do some uh, advocacy on behalf of the field. Um, like we just wrapped up a big project here uh, a few months ago where we worked on the support over the course of two years uh, and we convened an advisory group which required us to host a lot of meetings. Um, the problem is because we had partners from all over the state, it, we couldn't really get everyone in the same room at the same time. So what we ended up doing was combining uh, in-person meetings with people online. Um, so I think even Seth, you uh, and Jessica had participated in some of those. Um, I think the big consideration on that is to make sure that the audio setup is really well. So we mm -hmm. hooked up an external mic uh, to make sure that the, the sound in the room uh, was captured uh, so that the people online could hear. Because that's kind of the, that's like the big thing that we run into is that before we didn't really put much uh, thought into that. So, you know, sometimes, you know, an in-person meeting might have uh, sort of these sidebar conversations or people that, you know, that may not be sort of speaking to a, to a greater audience, but we found that connecting to an external mic really helped solve a lot of that. Um, so the people online could more fully participate uh, as if they were really in the room. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for people that are interested in that, I think um, Juan, if, if they um, put a chat question or something like that, if you wanted to send them a link to sort of your equipment setup. Um, yep. What part of what Juan, Juan's talking about is there's something called the PZM mic that's specific for um, for a meeting setup. It's 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 like so I have this little microphone right here is like for one person and what I'm using right now uh, works really well for me. But if you have a group setting, there's something called the PZM mic that can pick them pick up a bunch of people. It's sort of if you guys have ever seen a conference room phone the kind that kind of look like a starfish, um, those are, they have PZM mics so that multiple people can be talking at once and it will pick up that sound versus something like what I have right now has this little bubble of space that it'll pick up sound from, but it's not very, it doesn't point in a direction and it's not gonna be able to get something that's super far away. Um, okay, so I'm gonna jump back in. Thank you, Juan. and. Um, we might, uh, Cat Meow and Juan might chime in from time to time just to kind of add add on to what we're saying here, okay? I did okay. want to say about the PCM mic, what's happening is basically the same thing that's happening when you have one person being, that their voice is being recognized, like right now, like I'm probably showing up maybe because my voice is being recognized by this Google meetings. Um, the same thing happens with that PCM. So it's recognizing different voices and whichever, person starts talking, it'll just like skip around to each person. It's incredible stuff. Okay. So let's talk about, I'm going to share the screen now. Um, I'm going to present, I'm actually going to present because we're going to talk about how to actually set up, um, set up a meeting. So I'm going to present from a different desktop right now. So we're, we're using Google Hangouts Meet. There is other software that's free called Google Hangouts. Um, and they're very similar, but Google, like I said, Google Hangouts Meet, if you're working with a school district or, um, or any kind of organization that uses G Suite as their primary um, service for email and calendaring, is, um, it's, it's what I would recommend using unless you want to invest in Zoom. So um, I'm just gonna take a look, I'm, I'm in my interface here. Um, there's some different ways to get to meet. It's actually in the little um, multi-dot here, you can get to meet here. I also have Hangouts available if I need it. Um, so I'm gonna, I can go to meet and I can actually schedule that. Um, I can join or start a meeting right here. I can enter the meeting name. So I'm gonna just say test meeting. They continue. And um, so uh, I can join now right here. And then if I wanna like send that information out, I can copy that 
and send that out to email. So a lot of you guys, I sent you an email that just had this right here, and then it has dial-in information for people that are joining for, from phone. So that's one way to do it. Generally, I don't, um, I'm gonna get out of this meeting now. So let's move that out of the way. Um, I'm gonna return to home screen. I do this, sometimes I schedule stuff from there, but really um, a lot of, um, the, the meetings are, are, it's better to schedule them from the calendar, it's just a little bit easier. So what I do is, let's say I wanna start a meeting right here. So I'm, I'm right here on my screen. Um, I click on this, I'm gonna do test meeting. And in order to, there's this location here, but in order to actually um, create, uh, make it so it's set up as a Google meeting, um, I need to do this right here. I need to go to add conferencing right here. And that's just a drop down that says Hangouts Meet. And then uh, Google just auto generates the meeting right there. Okay, so just a little, this is a little bit different uh, from Google Hangouts, which Google Hangouts, if I'm in my email, so I'll go to my email real quick here. Um, if I'm in my email, Google Hangouts, all I need to do is pop open the chat in the left-hand corner. So it should be somewhere right here. Do a little refresh. Okay. There we go. Okay, so if I wanna start a Google Hangout, I can actually just like enter people's name. And what's different about it is it's sort of like a telephone call. It will automatically ping that person and they'll get something that pops up and says, blah -de blah is calling you. So it's a, little, it's a little bit better at sort of nagging you to pick up the phone. Um, uh, Hangouts Meet is, is more by invitation. So you have to send that link. Okay, so that's how we set it up via the calendar. And then all, you know, when you add stuff on your calendar, you can just pick whoever you want. I, what I did was I just paste, cut and pasted a huge list of all these emails and just added them to our calendar. And that, that way everybody has the calendar invite. Um, let's see here. So, and then I think what, um, you guys probably saw this earlier. So Jessica Lou was adding people. I'm gonna go back to this screen right now. So your entire screen. So, um, so somebody asked me to repeat. So I'm gonna repeat the directions one more time. So we're gonna go back, discard. So just so you guys know, we're doing a screen recording of this too. So if you need to rewatch it, that's okay. I'm gonna present my entire screen. Okay, so if I want to set up a meeting, I go into Google Calendar. I create my calendar invitation. And I have to go down here to more options because um, it, I can't just set up a Google meeting from the first pop-up that happens. So I go to more options and I wanna go to add conferencing, Hangouts Meet. And then from here, I add guests that will be um, populated. Okay, somebody asked about the Hangout, Google Hangouts. Um, so Google Hangouts, there's different ways you can access it. One was from my email. So, and if you guys hear my child in the background, I apologize, this is part of our new reality. <laughs> um, is, and I think that's a really good thing to sort of like take, take note, not all of your teleconferences, especially nowadays, are gonna go perfectly. Like this is part of our new reality, it's not gonna be perfect. So just, just know like, have a little bit of grace, <laughs> that's all. Um, so I'm gonna go down here, I add this plus. Right here in the corner, if I'm doing Google Hangouts, I add this plus, 
and I can add a new group and just enter the name of people. So I might call my friend Taj, um, and I might call my friend Andy, and um, invite them to 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 a Google Hangout, and then it will actually create that Hangout, and it'll pop up. So a Google Hangout, what it looks like, if I go to Hangouts, I can do um, I can do video calls straight from here. Oh, it's going to put me right in the meet. Interesting. Well, if you have it for yourself, um, and and the reason why I'm saying I'm talking about Google Hangouts is because it's free. It's the freest software <laughs> there is for. If you just have an email a Gmail account, you can use it. So if you want to add people, you go in here and you can add people in here, um, and then it creates. It'll pop up a new video call. But what I would say about Google Hangouts is it does have screen record. Um, not It does not have screen record. You can present on it, but it's not as powerful as Google Hangouts Meet. So if you just need something bare bones, um, it's good software, but you can't do a screen record. You can do screen presenting. Um, and it's not clear if Google's, I don't know what Google's going to do with this in the future. It may stick around. They have something else called Duo. Um, but it's not totally clear if this is going to stick around forever. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Close that. We sent out an invite. That's how we send out a Google Calendar invite. So let's see here. If I'm going to add people live, I'm going to present on this screen, which has cat meow on it. So um, what will happen, and I think you guys saw this probably while I was sharing my screen. If somebody tries to um, get admitted to, to this, it'll there will be a little window that pops up and it says, X person is trying to enter the meeting. And then you can say admit now. That's a good sort of gate so that if somebody that you don't know is trying to get in the meeting, you can just say no. Okay, um, let's see here. So before I move forward, any questions? Um, if, if somebody wanted to ask, now would be a good time to ask questions about how do we invite people or let them into the meeting. I have a question. Okay. Uh, do, people, do people need to have Gmail to be able to participate in Google Hangouts or Google Hangout meeting? They do not. So that in order to host, in, let me. So for Google Hangouts Meet, they do not need to have a Gmail. In order to host it, they do. So if you want to host a meeting, yes, you need a Gmail. For Google Hangouts, I don't actually know. I I'm pretty sure you do need a Gmail to do that because then you need to be able to invite people to it. But I have not done my due diligence on Google Hangouts regarding that. Google um, Hangouts is part of the uh, is part of the suite of your of your Gmail. So you can't you can call somebody from Hangout, but they can't call you. Does that make sense? If they're not in it. If they're not in Gmail. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that answers it. So yes, you can call other people if you have a Gmail account, but um you can't receive or you can't make you can't make calls if you don't have a Gmail account. Right. Um, is there a way we can see everyone on one screen? So um, we're going to talk about um, the, the layout, um, the screen layout. But since you asked, um, I'm going to show you really quick. I'm presenting my screen. Click right here, and you can go to Change Layout. And there's different options. There's Auto. I have it set up as sidebar, tiled, or spotlight. Spotlight is just the person that's talking. I kind of like sidebar because it gives me more of a view of everybody that's uh, in, in the meeting. The other thing is on your sidebar, as you can see, you're only going to see like five or six people. So um, if I want to get take stock of how many people are actually here, I just go to this 45. So if you're managing the meeting, and you can also see their mic status, this red thing right here. So if you're managing that meeting, it's super helpful. Um, to I like the tiled view. 
And to get rid of this little sidebar, I just click anywhere in the window that's not a button. And obviously the chat function is super helpful. So um, if, if there are issues like um, audio or video issues, a lot of times the, um, the chat is a way that you can tell people that you're having problems. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Any other questions about invites? There was a question about how many there, how much, how much of a limit there is on invites for. Yeah, um, I think Google Meeting, Google Hangouts Meet will host up to two hundred and fifty people, and you can set it up to stream as like a webinar to over a hundred thousand or to a hundred thousand people. Zoom, I think, accommodates more people if you're trying to host a meeting. Um, yeah, that's true. Is it 500, Catmio? It, uh, it's 500, and then there's an upgrade you can buy. OK, cool. So, so yes, that's, those are our limits. More questions? I a, yes, I have a question. Um, in your presentation, Seth, on the right margin, I see live screens of, I don't know if they're presenters or not, two people who have spoken, but three additional people. Yeah. Um, how do we, how do, we, uh, tell me about that. <laughs> okay, so these are just the screens of people that are here. Um, and it usually pulls up the people that have spoken last. So we have Juan, Katmio, Jessica, I'm not sure, um, but it, but it, so far, I do not, you know, like know the correct. I don't know if you can actually make this organized a certain way. Thank you. Yep. Um, but we might as well take a look. Um, so I'm going to dig into the guts of the controls here a little bit. So if you don't, we just looked at change low at layout, full screen. Um, is this going to go full screen? I'm going to zoom back out. Um, Exit full screen will show the rest of my web browser, which I highly recommend Chrome as your web browser um, if you're going to use Google Hang Hangouts Meet. But there are plugins for Edge, uh, Firefox, and Safari. And then turn on captions is handy. So um, if somebody's talking, uh, it will actually live caption. So if somebody's hard of hearing, that's a good, um, that's something, and it's not terrible right now. Google's getting better and better with speech detection. So I'm gonna turn captions off for me. Um, and then if you go into settings here, um, we're gonna move on to this next section about how do we dial in our audio and video. So um, settings right here is, if you're having audio or video issues, it's most likely going to be a problem in here. I have it set so I'm recording off my headphones. Um, this is, I, I would highly recommend that these are like Apple earbuds from back in the day. They have a mini jack that looks like, I'm going to pull this out. So If you have an Apple computer, you can, um, you'll see this, it has three little rings. Two of them are for your audio, and one of them is for your microphone. So that's, that's Apple's deal. Um, and obviously if you have, a, if you have like a, um, an iPhone or something like that, um, they have the new lightning adapter. But if you do have an Apple computer and you want to have your, your mic and your headphones combined, it needs to have these three little rings. Okay, so go to settings. Let me go to present my entire screen. So if we go into settings, this is where we're going to dial in our microphone. And hopefully, you know, most things you can just use the, the built-in microphone, but it's going to be a little bit more echoey. That's why it's nice to have something that has the mic right next to your face. And then if you go to headphones, um, it's 
it's picking built-in headphones, but you might have different means of connecting to audio. Um, again, anything that that isolates the noise. So we heard just a little while the, while ago, we heard feedback because we had a person that had their phone. They were using their phone to be in the meeting, but then they queued up. Um, they queued up the audio. They queued up their device with the meeting, and what that causes is a feedback loop, and that's why you hear that like feedback noise. It also happens if your speakers pick up your audio, it can cause feedback too, which is why a mic is a good thing. You also want to be, if you can, try not to be too shaded. So I have like a big um, light right here, and then some light for my windows on my face. You want to try not to be backlit. I think everybody's shot a photo where somebody's up against a, um, a, a window or something like that, and it makes it so that you can't see their face very well. That's just how cameras work, is they, they kind of balance out exposure so that it's the middle of the road. And um, what you really want is for your face to be best exposed. So try and make sure that you have some light. The other thing is you want to be careful not to be tilted too far down or too far up. So um, we call this, you don't want to have too much head space, like too space, too much space above your head. And also, um, cat meow. It looks like you're demoing. Okay. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop presenting so she can demo. Cat meow, can you show us what not to do? So okay, let me turn off my lamp and then I'm going to just sit in front of this. Let me undo that. So I have a pretty bright screen, so I'm going to turn it down so you can see what it's like dark. So that's probably not something you want. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Yeah. Or like this, because nobody looks good from this angle. <laughs> so all I'm doing to fix that is literally I'm just going to turn on my desk lamp here. I'm going to put an additional light on top. My screen actually acts as somewhat of a light. You can see that getting brighter. I'm just turning up the brightness on my screen a little bit. And then I'm going to close these darn blinds. And if you have a cat available and you can put them on this thing, uh, they'll also help block out some of the light. <laughs> <laughs> That's a technical term. Thank cat. you. OK. Um, any questions about um, audio, dialing in audio or um, um, or making sure you kind of like making sure you get good audio in the space that you're in? And you can unmute your mic if you want to chime in. I was going to mention something that I've had seen people have trouble with before, and that was that um, for Macs anyway, for a Mac. Um, if you go into the system preferences in the top right corner where your little Apple is, um, if you click on that, a lot of times people are going to try to change their sound to fix audio problems. But oftentimes what's going on if there's sound issues is, and it's related to your computer, is um, actually within the privacy settings. So if you click on your privacy and security settings, you can allow certain applications to use your microphone and your camera or not. And if they're not clicked on to allow um, for every single thing from for Zoom, for Chrome, for Firefox, all those browsers and different applications, if they're not clicked allowed, then it won't work no matter what you do within the app itself. So you have to can tell you, your computer to trust it. Can you guys see my system preferences here? Yes, I'm seeing some heads, yes. So. Sound is, sometimes people go into sound, which um, that's basically this is sort of what your computers, if you play music or something like that, um, they'll, um, you're going to hear music out of your regular speakers. But specifically in um, Google Hangouts Meet, you can dial it in so it comes in from a specific source, your microphone. And so it goes out through a specific output, which are your headphones. Um, so the sound is uh, is not what Kat Meow was talking about. She was talking about this privacy and security. 
right here. Um, and um, it's going to, it, it might squawk at you. Um, let's see if I can find it. Microphone. Okay. So certain things are going to ask if they can use your microphone. So you have Zoom on here, I have Skype, I have Google Chrome. Um, so this is where we're going to have, you might bump into problems. And sometimes that requires administrative access, which if you don't have that, you're going to have to ask your administrators to help you with that. Oh, somebody asked, can you highlight your cursor? Um, I'm going to stop presenting for a second. I don't have a way to do that in, um, I don't have that in, yeah, J. Louis answered it basically. So Google Hangouts Meet does not have that book baked into their software. But what Jessica just said is on Google um, Chrome, there are extensions that you can make so that people can see your cursor a little bit better. Okay, let's see here. So we talked a little bit about the chat bubble. Um, I'm gonna share the screen here. While that's loading, I also think it's really important, make sure you're plugged in. Like for some reason, video stuff, well, it's got a good reason. Um, it's it's kind of an, a, an energy hog. So it's very important to be plugged in while you're doing this stuff because um, it, it, it will burn through your battery. So if you guys look in this top right hand corner where that one is, that's the chat bubble. If I click on that, it will pop out the chat. And um, when people plop something into the chat, it sort of, it shows up here too, so I'm aware of it. Um, but this is a good place to share links, to uh, ask for technical assistance, or just, you know, kind of while the, the presentation is going on, have ongoing conversation. And um, be, before people ask, there is no sort of breakout room per se in um, Google Hangouts Meet. I just read about something called Jamboard, which is fairly new for Google, that it sounds like there's sort of some hacked in way that you can make that work to have a breakout room. But right now, for most people, Google Hangouts Meet is not going to support breakouts, which you can ask, you can do a feature request for that. So. Um, if that's something you want, the way Google works usually is like if enough people ask for it, they do it. But um, it's still sort of like a black box to me how things get changed. <laughs> um, so this is our chat right here. And if what we're going to do in a set, when we transition to Zoom, um, we're actually going to paste the Zoom the Zoom meeting link into there so that everybody can get to that Zoom meeting um, that we have set up. So we do need to be able to use chat. There's also um, your list of who's in your who's in your um, meeting. And each person, they have a little drop down. So Amanda, I'm going to pick on you. I can't unmute your microphone. Um, I can remove you. I can pin you to the screen so that if um, if I want you to be the person that's presented to everybody, um, I can pin that so that you're the person that stays there. Um, question. Uh, okay, are there any questions about using that chat, that chat bubble? Oh, there was a really good point that somebody brought up about how it seems like you need more than one person to run one of these uh, successfully or efficiently. Um, yeah, I second they, that motion. <laughs> they said a tech support, a presenter, and a moderator. And yeah, yeah. that's... Amen. Thank, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you to um, Tat Meow and J. Lou. Absolutely. And even just to add another thing, so like uh, our... Um, so we have trainers that do a lot of like webinars and online training. Um, and even for that, which is a lot of the times it can be very one way and it can kind of seem like uh, you maybe don't need, but you actually do. Because uh, like a lot of times you'll have 
people that are having tech issues or questions in the chat box and it's a lot for one person to manage so even when we do like a webinar we always have uh sort of the person that's presenting in this case would be seth and then somebody else would be monitoring the chat box of the participants if any issues come up so yes i would third and fourth that uh point okay let's see here um presenting screen so um I went through this earlier. Um, I'm presenting right now, but one of the nice things about Google Hangouts Meet is it has the same interface while I'm presenting as while I'm not. One thing that we found with Zoom is that if you want to teach people how to use Zoom and you turn on screen presentation, it, it's a different interface. Some of the stuff's still there, but not all of it. Um, so I'm gonna just show you in, um, in um, how to do a screen presentation. Um, so I have, I'm presenting right now, but if you did want to present your screen, you could click on this right here and it says I'm presenting. I can stop presenting um, and I can pick different desktops because uh, I have multiple monitors. I can pick which monitor I want to be presented. Um, can participants share their screens? Yes, participants can. So why don't we do, do a little practice um, I'm going to randomly call unless we can have one volunteer. Could somebody go? So the first person to share their screen wins. So if somebody wants to just jump in and share their screen, let's try it. So I'm going to stop presenting. Ryan, homeboy. Thank you. Ryan, do you want to share anything with us? Oh, your mic's muted. Um, yes, I will share that. I forgot to unmute my mic before presenting. So okay. it would be a good idea to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's very common. Um, I just don't think we're, you know, we're not totally used to this virtual environment and don't, you know, it's, it's going to be really common to have something like that happen. Thank you, Ryan. Anybody else want to present their screen? If you unclick your mic, do you, are you presenting or how do you, how do you, percent um so if you go i'm going to show you again so i'm going to um give me just a second so if i uh margaret if i go down to this right hand corner that says you are presenting it says that right now because i'm presenting but it gives you the option of presenting your screen so um I want, if I want to use that, you can just click on that and it'll allow you to present. Okay. Are, are you talking about the lower right-hand corner? Yeah, if you go on the left, so one of the things is Hangout Meet hides this bar sometimes. So you have to go down and see this corner right here that says you are presenting. Uh oh, I see, I see Seth Ring is presenting, right. Yeah. So somebody said that they want to replace their video. The way to do that would be through the change layout. Uh, okay. And then you can also, if you, if like, if all I want to hear or see is Margaret, then I can pin that so that she's the only person that gets to talk with the League of Women Voters. Thank you for coming, by the way. We appreciate okay. you. Thank you for presenting. Um, okay, I'm going to unpin that. And she, it looks like she just muted her mic. Somebody else, somebody else want to present their screen? Just click on, click down here. I'm going to, I'm going to leave, I'm going to stop presenting. Anybody else want to present their screen? J. Lou, thank you. Oh, Sonia Nelson. Let's do, let's have Sonia Nelson. I'm going to unpin me. All right. J. Lou is presenting. J. Lou, are you presenting off an iPad? I was, but I jumped off so Sonia could. OK, cool beans. That is another thing. Um, oddly, if you want to present from like an iPad or an iPhone and Google Hangouts Meet, you can. If you want to present from a Android device, you can't, which does not make 100% sense to me, but that's how it is. Um, if you're on a Google Chrome browser, then you anybody can present regardless of whether you're in Windows or in Apple. But this it's a really powerful thing to be able to present your screen. Um, 
OK. So um, and we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, there's this meeting details I'm going to present now. This meeting details carrot right here, if I click that up, it has the uh, information if I need to send that to somebody. I can copy that joining information. And if you've attached, you can actually uh, add attachments in Google Calendar to something that you're sending. Um, and if there's any attachments, you can actually open them from here. If you look down here, obviously this is your mic control. This is how we hang up leave from the call, and then I can turn off my camera right here. OK, um, I think we've pretty much covered screen sharing. Um, I, I will say one of the things that people would um, like to sh do is share a video with everyone. Currently, in Google Hangouts Meet, you cannot do that and, and have the video sound play. So you, you can't have your internal sound from your computer playing on their screens. I could unplug my microphone and then you get the audio from my speakers going through my microphone, but it sounds kind of crappy. So what I would say is um, if you're trying to like show a video or something like that and you're using Google Hangouts Meet, I would paste that video into, um, into the chat. And then you have to like wait for everybody to watch it, and then they reconvene and talk about it. OK. Um, Jaylu or Katniel, were there any questions that you thought were good ones to throw out there? There's an interesting one about how to present your video or your avatar when you're not in the meeting, like say you have to go, like for instance, me, my cat likes to throw up during Zoom calls, so I have to go clean that up. They sure. have to do that, and I don't want my chair to just be sitting here empty. Yeah. Is there a uh, picture I could put up instead? Yes, yeah. so what I would say is your avatar is, you dial that in in your um, overall Google account settings. So for instance, I'm gonna pick on JLU here. If I zoom in, it has her picture, right? Same thing. I think Ryan had his, uh, if I'll, I'll zoom in, Ryan has his picture. That is done in your Google account. So you actually have to go to your Google account and update your avatar, like mine's this tiny little dude in the corner here. Um, that is, if you want it to just show a picture, otherwise it'll just have like the first letter of your name. And if you don't, you don't want your camera still running, just turn that thing off right here. Kat also had a good question about uh, whether or not you had to have Google Meets in order to join it. You do not. Um, you need a Chrome browser. If you're on a um, if you're on a if you're on a Chrome browser on a computer, then no, you don't. If you are on a handheld device, yes, you do. And that's an that's an enterprise um, app. Um, you have to be part. Have the Google Meet on your iOS of our our uh, phone. I don't. I don't think you need to be. I think you can just log in. Um, as, if if you're trying to do it enterprise, like from your Chrome browser, but I don't think it is a problem if you are just putting it on like an Android device or on an iPad. Yeah, I'm interested in the use of doing remote interviews from the field. If someone's on their phone and I call them from, you know, or, or try to tune them in, would they have video in the field? Yeah. Their um, remote device. Yeah. Um, so for something like that, I would, you know, if, if you have Google Hangouts Meet, then um, you can ask them to install that as an app on their phone or if you if they're going to be interviewing over a computer, then they just need to be using Chrome is what I'd recommend. Um, but you could use just Google Hangouts uh, if, if you wanted to, too. Um, and then we won't talk a lot about it, but, you know, um, FaceTime is an option. Um, 
if you have like an an eye device yeah yeah so you can't get video so is that is that meet app free for mobile devices i think so to? yes i i have to check um but i i guess i'm actually now, using it okay i'm using it right now it's a free app through on um, google play or thank um, you the play store from app um from apple and i am projecting right now using the meet app through my camera okay Hi. it looks like you have a, a western red cedar in the yard that's good <laughs> good eye <laughs> okay um excellent so yes it is free that answers the question um i realize it's complicated it's it's irritatingly so and i think it you know it boils down to you know Google, everything used to be free, but now they sort of, now they call it G Suite and it's this enterprise thing for companies. And there's still all of the Gmail that's free for, for just independent people. Um, but, but they are sort of slowly, at least for companies moving toward a, a payment model. Okay. Um, We've talked a little bit about this. We've shown some of the stuff, so I'm not gonna go too crazy about it, but um, just sort of like polite parlance is to mute your mic when you come into a meeting, just so we don't have too much going on. I'm, I'm sure at some point everybody's run into, somebody has their mic on and went away from the camera and that's just, that sound is going on and dominating the conversation. So really try and be careful to turn that off if you're gonna be in a meeting. Um, and then obviously like turn it on when you're ready to talk. We talked a little bit about pinning video and I showed you guys that. So um, if I want a particular person, so um, Cheryl, I'm gonna pick on you. Here's Cheryl. <laughs> Hi, um, I can pin or unpin that video. I can't unmute your mic, you have to do it yourself. How are you doing? I'm doing great. All right, <laughs> thank you. I'm gonna unpin um, and then what what um, Kat Meow said earlier, um, you know, if you get a participant that is unruly and you need to kick them out, you can go to this people right here and click on whoever it is. Let's say it's Anne and click this minus. And let's see if I can get the pop up together. Remove you can get them out of there. Okay, um, I think we've talked about most of Google Hangouts Meet stuff. Um, I, I, I will just, before we switch over to Zoom and um, Katniel is gonna take up this portion of it. Um, before we switch over to Zoom, I will say that I think that for for not super heavy lifting teleconferencing, I think Google Hangouts Meet is a great choice. It blends in really well with that environment. And it, it, you know the Google Calendar invites super handy. I suspect that they will add more features um, as, as, they, as they go. Um, but it's really, it's kind of depends on you and your budget and, and, and also which user interface you prefer. So uh, Kat Meow, I'm gonna hand it over to you to talk about Zoom. And before I say that, I'm gonna say we're gonna, we're staying in, in Google Hangouts Meet right now because the Zoom interface has to be demoed from, um, it needs to be demoed from, from a different teleconferencing software because you can't actually see the Zoom interface, the entire Zoom interface. Uh, on its own. So Kat Meow, do you have the Zoom meeting link? I've opened up the Zoom meeting. It should be a calendar invite for you. And if not, I'm going to send it. Yeah, I was just having trouble unmuting because uh, my dock was getting in the way. <laughs> okay. I know that is an irritate that dock is irritating. Okay. So we are going to. Okay, you are in Zoom now. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and I'm going to hand over ownership of the meeting to you. Just a second. Make host. Okay, you should be the host. Let's do this. Okay. Sorry, folks, let me get all these screens out of the way. So I'm the host in Google right now. So what I can do is present um, my screen so I can show you a little bit about the interface on Zoom. We're kind of going to go through how to set up the meeting first, and then I'll show you the interface if that works for folks. Good? OK. So first, to set up, where'd it go? Boop. To set up your Zoom, you're going to, oh, I didn't share my screen, did I? Google present now. Um, this one. Can you guys see my screen now? Yeah, it's, it's popping up. Yep, we got it. Oh, and actually I need to turn off Okay, that works. So you can see that I'm going to sign into the account. And so your account will look different when you set it up. Um, and you can set all kinds of things like your profile. You can change your avatar and all those things. Um, but mostly I want to show you in here are your settings, which you can set to default which is, means that it's gonna have that same setting for every single meeting that you have. Um, and so there's a lot you can do in here that you can't do within um, the, the meeting once you have set it up. So it's fun to look through it. There's a lot in here, so don't get overwhelmed. Um, you don't have to know every little piece. And um, there are tutorials on every single one of these, but I just wanted to let you know that that's an option at the start. Um, that you can set those defaults. So I'm going to go to the top right-ish and click on schedule a meeting and just walk you through it really quick. So you can name it whatever you want. You can name it like cat meow time or something professional um, if you're a professional. <laughs> um, and then you can even enter a meeting description. Um, I know with KBU, there's so many different departments and so many different committees that it's really helpful to say, this is the development meeting about such and such so that everyone's on the same page. It's great. Um, you can scroll down and see that there's a win. So to be able to pick a specific date, you can either click right in here and type away, or I like to do this because I'm a visual learner is click on the small tiny calendar icon um, next to the date and then you can toggle through different dates and I'm going to say let's meet on my birthday yeah I love having meetings on my birthday at three o'clock yeah so I'm circling right there three o'clock you can change p.m. to a.m. it might go to a.m. and then the duration and the time zone is important if you're having folks joining you from other areas let them know hey this is in this time zone you can also set reoccurring meetings here. Um, a lot of folks like have a reoccurring staff meeting right now just because we're all separate and we need to connect. Um, student, you know, check-ins, such and things like that. Um, you're always gonna have a personal meeting ID. I don't typically require a password. Um, basically, if you require a password, it's like one more level of security, but typically with Zoom, you're sending out a link and only folks with that link can can get in. Um, even if you send a password out, if someone has the password and the link, they can still get in. So I don't typically send a password. Um, and you also have the ability as a host to kick folks out. Um, I turn my host video on as well as my participant camera on when I set up meetings. I found, have been finding after doing this a long time that people are a lot more into sharing their faces if you share your face first and if their camera's already on when they start they're more likely to leave it on and it just gives a lot more sense of community and a lot more connection you can see people's reactions it's also a lot easier as a moderator to see people who may be raising their hand to speak 
Um, so another thing that I really like to do is enable both telephone and computer audio, not just one or the other. A lot of folks are calling in from their phones and don't actually have um, the capability to use a computer. And that's something that is important to recognize uh, so that you can allow folks who have either a phone or a computer to join. Enable before host is a great box to click, um, especially if uh, the meeting you're having is gonna be among people who already know each other. That'll allow them to, to join the meeting before you officially start it and chit chat amongst themselves before you get there. Um, I do tend to mute participants on entry to like board meetings and things of any nature really because folks will tend to forget to mute their mic when they first come in and might not understand that we can hear them typing or checking their email or whatever, or talking to their kids or pets or whatever. Um, so I usually do mute participants on entry. You can always unmute them and they can unmute themselves as well. And I love using that waiting room. It's a place where people can meet and talk and you can start preparing your things or talking with other folks who are facilitating with you before allowing everyone into the room. And that's a really great thing um, I found it's very, very helpful. Um, and then you can also invite alternative hosts, uh, co-hosts with different folks. Um, say it's someone outside of your organization, you can add their email here. Like I could be like, I want Seth to help me with cat meow time on my birthday, you know, and I could have him um, join me by typing in his email there. Um, so then you would save it. I'm not going to save it because um, I actually am not having this. I know everyone was looking forward to it, but. I'm not actually going to have that. So I'll go into um, my meetings now. I'm going to the left-hand side in the column on the left under personal, and I'm gonna look at what meetings I have scheduled. So it looks like there's tons of stuff scheduled. I'm gonna go to my board meeting and kind of show you what it looks like once it's all set up. And y'all are welcome to come to the KBU board meeting, by the way. Um, there's, the, there's the URL right here. Um, so for inviting folks to these meetings, you can click on the invite, add to your Google Calendar and do it through there. If you have Outlook, you can add it through here, um, this middle one, and then Yahoo Calendar here. You can also copy the invitation. And can you see that pop-up that happened? Um, this meeting invitation, you scroll down, it has all the information you need, it has phone numbers, um, the time and date, you can copy that meeting invitation and then you can place it in any email or just you know message it to people, post it on your social media, et cetera. Um, and then of course you can delete your meeting, save it, edit your meeting at any time. Um, the thing with Zoom is if you have a meeting scheduled at the same time as someone else in your organization, you cannot have them at the same time. So we have an internal calendar that we use so we're not um, stepping on each other's toes. You can also check by clicking on that meetings tab to see what all scheduled. So you're not you know, starting a meeting when somebody else has one. You can also look at your previous meetings and you can, um, let's see, here's one here. I believe if you've um, recorded, you can get your recordings through here. I don't think we, I think we recorded this one locally. Um, so it's not showing up. Oops, sorry about that folks. Okay, let me see what else is on this here. Meeting, do, 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 do. So I think that's all about setting it up. Um, I did want to show, where did my little cursor go? I did want to show you how to set the um, recording. So I want to edit this meeting. I'm clicking on edit meeting down at the bottom. And I wanted to record this meeting automatically. So when you click on record the meeting automatically, the invisible things pop up, which is you can um, record it to the local computer. And that just means to record it to your desktop, basically, or to the cloud, which is what a lot of some folks are scared of. Some people love it. Um, in the cloud is typically what we're doing at KBU, just because um, if you 
recorded to your local computer. It actually takes up quite a lot of space. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. When you record it to your local computer, like I did last time, does everyone see this um, in my left hand top of the screen uh, folder here? Um, if I double click on this, it, it'll show you everything you get, which is an audio file. Let me see, make this bigger for you. So there's that audio file. It's pretty big, but not as big as this file, which is the audio and the video. Okay, <laughs> so that was from our last meeting. I look angry. Um, you can also get just uh, this <laughs> playback info, and you can also get your, your text. So something important about um, when it's recording the text is to remember that in Zoom, it'll say private message. You'll see like right here, beep, 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 bop, 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 bop. somewhere in here it says private. Uh, well, when it says private in your chats in Zoom, it is private during the call, but when you get your, your data, you're um, saved from your meeting, it's actually gonna show up like everything people are chatting amongst themselves. So just make sure that people know that, that even though they may be sending private messages, they're not actually private and um, to, to know that it's getting recorded. Pri um, so private ain't private. Yeah. Um, private hey, Cat, Cat Meow, can I, we had a question that said the cursor size is kind of small. Um, can I do a quick show them demo how to do um, how to change that in if they're on a Mac? Um, give me just a second. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, share now. So screen two. Um, so that is that's a common thing with meetings. If you want to change your, you guys can see Cat Meow's in her, the Zoom interface right now. Um, if I go up to this left-hand corner, um, my, see how my mouse is freaking huge um, for scale. There's Cat Meow's eye, and the mouse is as big as it. Um, you go to System Preferences, and let me pull those up. Come on now, participate. Um, and I'll go back one step. Go to um, Accessibility if you're running a Mac. Go to Display. Um, and I actually have it already selected, but if you go on cursor, you can change your cursor size so it's freaking gigantic in case you want to demo. It is helpful. There is also that um, cursor highlight tool in Google Chrome, um, but if you want to just have a giant mouse uh, cursor, that's okay too. So I'm going to close that up. Okay, I'm going to stop presenting and cat me out if you want to take a second to adjust your cursor size. We can wait. Let's see here, I'm looking at other questions that we have. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, so people know this is a paid version of Zoom that we're using right now. Um, they're actually fairly comparable. Um, Zoom and um, and fr sorry, free Zoom versus um, basic, whatever. There there are some things that get added, um, but one of the things that we're going to be doing, we pr we have um, people that produce television programs at Metro East, and we're going to be doing a teleconferencing, uh, doing a teleconferencing workshop where they can set up interviews sort of like what people have been seeing. If, if anybody's seen any of the late night talk shows, almost all of them have moved to, they're on an iPad or on, um, in Zoom or whatever. Um, and I think that the the unpaid version of Zoom is what we'll probably recommend to them because it has pretty good presentation capabilities. All right, Cat Meow, I'm gonna hand it back to you. All right. Thank you. All right. Can everybody see that screen now? Yeah, I made my. Up. Uh, it popped up. Made the mouse bigger. Is that better, folks? Thank you so much for saying something about that. That's important. 
and useful tool. So hopefully you can see, where were we folks? We're saving this. Oh, we were talking about recording to the computer versus the cloud. So basically, um, if you're gonna save it to your computer, I would recommend having a hard drive or something, you could take it off your computer and save it on that instead, um, or just choose the cloud. Um, and that can be sent at any time. And when you do choose the cloud, that allows you to go back into your old meetings and um, find that recording and send it at any time. Whereas if you choose your local computer, you will be the only one with that recording, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. So that's for setting up your meeting and inviting folks. Um, if you look right here is where you can find your recordings underneath the personal, underneath webinar. And so that's where you'll see um, the last meeting we had. If I click on it. Oh, that's not the right one. Um, so this one was, was recorded to the cloud. This is our development one, right? And if I go, that is not what I wanted to do. Okay, here we go. I go to recordings again, and I look at my last board meeting. That was recorded to a computer, and so it's not on here. That makes sense. So if you're having um, a lot of people needing access to your files, I'd recommend using the cloud. If you need to edit it um, for brevity or interference or you're trying to add it to something else, then you can put it on your own um, hard drive. Um, are there any questions about setting up the invite and the meeting so far? Because we can move to the interface if not. I'm looking at the comments right now. So you're, you're seeing my screen, um, which is this here. And then if I move it to the left, you can see Seth because we have a Zoom um, meeting open as well as the Google meeting. And that's what this here is. That's Seth's head. That is so, correct. And I, once we get into this interface, I can, well, I guess I can just start showing you this now, folks. So um, just like in Hangouts, we've got your audio and camera options here. It looks like somebody wanted to know about captions, so I'm gonna skip to that, but I'll come right back to these here in a second on the left, so. Can you go full your, screen? Cat full view? screen, yeah. sure, yeah. There we go. My internet connection apparently is unstable, so that's a bummer. Um, and I'm gonna need, so when I'm in full screen, it's actually not allowing me to see my controls. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of full screen, but I will make it bigger so that it's not distracting. Thank you for your patience, folks. Okay, so if you want closed captioning, um, you can go down to the bottom of your screen as, as a presenter and there should be a closed captioning button here. So what it looks like is that what possibly has happened is, is that I need to go ahead and set that up um, by going back into my settings. So this would be something you would have to do in the back end, which is uh, this area, when you're actually setting up your Zoom meeting to allow for closed captioning. So I think what that would mean is when you set up your meeting or when you set up your um, default settings on the left here in Zoom, you would need to look for conferencing, or I mean, I'm sorry, closed captioning and I'm not sure what section that would be under. There's all kinds of things you can do in here. Maybe it's, I feel like it should be in basic. Nonverbal feedback, remote control, like, part, 
I've definitely seen closed captioning on before, but I haven't turned it on myself. Co host. Hang on, you guys. Okay, so closed captioning's here. So if, if we had turned that on previously by um, clicking on that toggle, this pop-up will come on, turn on closed captioning, and then you can do so. And a lot of things you can turn on and off in here. And you can, um, oops. You can always change these at any time during your meeting. So if Seth went in and changed it, it would pop up right down here in next to breakout rooms and record and chat. That's where your options start popping up the more things you add to your meeting. Okay. Um, so we'll go over the mic setups. This is just where you're gonna, in the lower left-hand corner is gonna be where you can select your microphone select um, a speaker um, and also leave your computer audio and change your audio options. Um, your camera is gonna be, if you click on that, it's gonna turn off your camera. Um, but if you click the carrot, let me get out of this one first. Hold on. The up, upward carrot, you can go into your video settings and test things and enable different mirror effects, touch up your appearance, which kind of just kind of blurs you and makes you look a little prettier. Um, you can enable HD if you'd like. And spotlight yourself. And then on certain versions, you can also select um, a background image um, and it'll pop up in this section here. And that'll allow you to have some like cool, neat stuff in the background um, going while you're while your screen's going and participants, if they have Zoom accounts um, that have access to that can change their backgrounds too, which is kind of cool. Okay, um, let me see here. Up at the top right hand corner is where you change your speaker view. So right now I'm talking and you can see me and Seth's a Metro East design. I can also toggle it like this. Now, um, I'm looking at a different screen, and that's why I'm looking up and looking weird. But what you can do is bring this screen closer to your webcam or whatever camera you're using, and that'll make it look like you're speaking to your audience instead of like staring up in a kind of weird alien-esque way. Um, so if I were doing this, I would ideally have this um, on the camera in front of me, and I would move my screen around like this until it's right next to the camera. My picture is because we tend to look at ourselves. And so if you position your your picture um, above your camera, then you're going to tend to look at that and make more contact with your viewer, make your um, participants feel like you're paying attention to them and not um, doing your emails or something on the side. No shame. I do that too. OK, so the next step is this camera for you. Um, you can live invite folks. Um, if you go to the bottom middle section, you'll see a ton of things popped up down here. Um, so to live invite, you'll just click on that. You can use default emails, your Gmail, your Yahoo mail. You can also just copy the invitation or a URL by clicking on either of these two bottom left buttons. And then um, go into another um, window and invite folks that way while you're having the session. And I'm just going to X X here at the top left. And then you can also manage your participants. So right now you'll see um, when I clicked on manage participants, um, there's a ton of people involved right now. Wow, uh, the number's right there next to participants on the top right. And this screen popped up. So this is where you're gonna be able to control um, what's going on in your, in your arena. So it looks like Seth's microphone is on. So I'm gonna mute Seth. Um, and I can actually turn his camera off, it looks like too. I can remove Seth. I can put them on hold. I can also make folks co-hosts in this window, which can be helpful if somebody has um, information they want to share during the meeting or a um, really important you know, uh, picture or video. You can also make someone else the host. 
Um, so you can also, if there's lots of participants and you're having trouble um, wrangling all the cats, you can mute everyone. And then you're just gonna say yes. You wanna allow participants to unmute themselves. But if it's um, quite a lot of people and, and you're under time constraints, something that you can do is um, go ahead and click on that box there, allow participants to unmute themselves. And um, when it's not clicked, when it's not check marked, that means that they won't be able to unmute themselves and you'll maintain um, just the speakers and allowing who's speaking and not speaking. Um, you'll have that control over that. That's really helpful if you have more than like seven or eight people. Okay, so I'm gonna allow people to mute themselves. Um, and they'll see more here. So you can lock your meeting. You can also have these, um, you'll see in the lower right here, you can mute participants on entry. You can take that off. That was one of the settings earlier that I had set because I really like having people muted when they first come in. Um, you can also check or uncheck play, enter and exit chime. And that's helpful if you're just having a lot of people come in or maybe folks are coming in late and you wanna know if another person's joining because welcoming them is important or something along those lines. Um, so you can turn that off or on just by clicking. See how that check mark went away and now it's on again. Um, you can also clear your feed. Um, what that means is if folks were communicating in the chat, you could clear that. So there's also fun little um, thumbs up, thumbs down, clapping, coffee, like if you need to step away for a coffee, if you need a little break, um, those are helpful. Um, there also is usually a hand that's like a hand raised, and that's great for if you're asking folks to raise their hand before they speak. Um, it'll actually put a hand in the chat window. So you'll know, oh, your moderator will know, oh, I, I need to call, call on them. Thank you, yeah, you would wanna um, lock the meeting so that folks can't join once you've started. Um, if This is especially good for meetings that are dealing with sensitive topics that if somebody were to interrupt, it would uh, disrupt kind of the flow of the meeting. Um, uh, a meeting that I've been on that, I, that it worked really well with was a meeting where folks were, um, it was a support meeting for people who needed resources. And so it really wasn't, appropriate for people to be coming and going. It needed to be a really like close-knit focused activity. Um, so that's one one reason that would be helpful. Okay, so that's the participant box. So we can close that by going up here and hitting close. And you can get it back by going down to the middle and clicking on the participants again. Um, share screen. Um, so that's what I'm doing in Google Meetings right now. If I wanted to share my screen in Zoom, I would click on this, but I'm not going to. You can already see my screen. Then the chat bot bubble, um, that pops out as an actual um, window, so you can move it all around, wherever it best suits you. I typically put it over here in case I do need to manage participants. I'm not locking any of the pictures, and I can see um, the chat as well as my participant status. Um, and if you don't have someone helping you, it, th this is a really nice feature. Um, if you don't have somebody helping you moderate. Okay, so you can also choose within your chat bubble um, to talk to just one participant um, or everyone. And again, if I were to type to Seth, it says privately, hey, this class is so cool. Right, it says privately, but again, when you export that information, everyone's gonna know that I was talking to Seth about how cool y'all are, and that's embarrassing. So just remember that everything you put on there is private, but not quite. Um, so I'm gonna change that back to everyone. And there's a bunch more. So you can allow your attendees to chat with everyone, or if you really, if there's a lot of folks and that's, and that's not helpful, you can allow just um, communication with the host or merge your meeting to another window, which I'm not gonna do right now. Okay, so um, if you set up in your settings, like from before when I said that there were a lot of defaults, if you do set up a setting that allows you only, uh, that, that says record to cloud, um, it can. there's also another setting that you can set to record immediately as you start your meeting. 
Um, that can be useful if there are requirements of your organization that you have to have it start at the exact time or something like that. Um, I like having control over it because um, for like say our board meetings, um, certain certain things are happening in closed session, which means I would need to pause the recording. And so I need that manual control over it. Um, and if you click on record and say you forgot to set your settings as to where you wanted it recorded or not, you can choose here and now where to, where to record it. So that's helpful that you can do that within, um, within this um, little dash here. And then um, breakout rooms is a fun, fun thing. Um, so say you're having a group meeting and there are several different topics that need to be discussed. You can set up breakout rooms. Um, so you can have one participant per, per one participant per room right now because that's what we've got. We've got two people, so that makes sense. It's going to change um, depending upon how many um, people you have. So you can do. I wonder how many. A lot of rooms. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So many rooms, and you can manually select and put place people in those rooms, or you can automatically do it just at random. So I'm going to just create. I don't know, how many folks are on this, 28? I'm gonna create four rooms. And when I click on create down at the bottom there, what happens is you'll see that um, I've got a one person to split amongst all these rooms. So I can name the rooms if I want um, by topic. So let's try chat window, um, yes. We're gonna rename this room. Um, Screen share, yes, and we're gonna rename this room. Uh, how are you coping? Yes, so now what I can do is I can move Seth without Seth's permission to any of these um, rooms. So I'll move him to chat window. So then once that's happened, um, I can open all the rooms down here at the bottom you see the open all rooms. Um, and what that does is um, it gives me a pop out and you can't see it because it popped out on my other screen, but it says all participants can go to the room. So if Seth wants to join, he can go ahead and join that room that I sent him to. Can you join Seth? And now you're seeing my um, face in the window because everyone in my meeting, er everyone in the meeting left to go join the breakout rooms. So then as moderator, what you can do is you can say, oh, great, everyone's in the meeting rooms. You can see right here, and it'll list everyone in each room. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna let Seth hang out in that room, and I'm gonna go join um, the screen share breakout room just to see how they're doing. And I'm gonna say, yeah, that's the one I wanna go to. We'll leave Seth, and you can see it says it's gonna take a second and it popped up in another window, so let me bring it back over so you can see what's going on here. So right here, it says leave breakout room in the lower right. I'm gonna make this bigger so you can see it better. And so everyone's doing great in this room, and I feel confident about them and what they're discussing. So I'm gonna leave the breakout room, and I'm gonna to return to my main screen and it says returning to main session. And it did the same thing as it did last time as it put me on my other computer screen. So I'm gonna move this over so you can see. So I'm right back to where I was before. And at this time, I'm thinking that I really wanna check on Seth to see how Seth is doing in the chat window room. So I'm gonna go ahead and join that. It's gonna take a second. And now I'm hanging out with uh, Seth here in, I didn't, I didn't want to do that, sorry. Here in the great room that I mislabeled without the extra W, right? Chat window. So I can talk to Seth in here. I can see how he's doing. I can chat with Seth in this room. So you can see that the old um, chat window is still recording everything so whatever you're typing in here is being recorded hi how's the group you see that Seth? yeah i got it 
right, see? So you can have discussions with folks in this room, see how they're doing, and say you're like, okay, well, that's really great. I had a really good time. I'm gonna leave the breakout room set. That was fun. I'm gonna return to the main session. And say I'm like, wow, those people have been talking a really long time, those people meaning Seth. Um, so what I'm going to say is, okay, so that was really fun, and I'm glad that he had a lot of fun, um, but I'm closing the breakout room. In 30 seconds. And I can tell everyone that. So that just got sent, me typing that message under broadcast and message to all got sent to everybody in each room. And then um, once I hit close all rooms, there's 60 seconds that folks have to um, get their stuff together and leave that room. And then it's closed again. Mm -hmm. So that can be great for more pointed um, discussions or um, separating your groups up so that more work can get done. Because a lot of times, if there's more than seven participants in these um, Zoom meetings, it can be hard to hear people's voices and, and get everyone involved. Katmia, should we send the link to the Zoom meeting? Yeah, I think so. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to put the link to the Zoom meeting in the chat. I'm gonna, I'll, um, I'm gonna go to the invite under Zoom and copy URL. So I'm gonna plop that into the chat. That is the invite to the Zoom meeting. So you don't need, there shouldn't be a code. You should just be able to, um, you can just click on that link. You will need you will need to have Zoom downloaded. So, um, or you can actually view it from a web browser too. So you can view it from Google Chrome, I believe. But um, let's have people jump into the Zoom meeting if they want to, because we want to give you an actual experience in Zoom. The recording with your small window, a guest window. And we are leaving the Google Hangouts, correct? Yes. Um, I'm going to stay in it. OK. Um, because I want to make sure that people get over here if they need help. But you can start okay. conducting things in Zoom. OK, I will leave this. So everybody that's in our current Google Hangouts meeting, please transfer to the Zoom meeting. And Kat Meow, will you start the recording on, on the Zoom? Or actually, I'm going to record on this computer, so I'll record it. So just everybody that's in here right now, we're moving to the Zoom meeting. So, if, so let's try and click on that Zoom invite. I slacked, so I put, there is a link in the chat. Good call. So everybody knows we're moving to the Zoom meeting. So sign out of the Google meeting and move to the Zoom meeting. I have put the Zoom meeting in the chat.
Everybody, if you can, please leave the Google meeting and enter the Zoom meeting.